So at this point, Xbox is really just the gift that keeps on giving. And since, you know, I'm a jolly person, I want to give the gift to you guys. The gift of the new information happening with this whole Xbox situation. Obviously, it started on Sunday. They made me look stupid talking about a week or two ago. Oh, could this be the year that they catch up towards the PlayStation 5? I didn't think they would hit those sales numbers, but I thought there was a chance that they can, you know, close the gap a little bit, but no. Of course, we're talking about things like Starfield, potentially Gears of War, Indiana Jones coming to other platforms, first party exclusive Xbox titles, and many people are signaling doom and gloom for the Xbox brand. Well, we have an update on this. I also have an update for you guys based on some stuff that I've heard. So we're going to talk about all this stuff and of course focus in on good old Slick Philly Spencer. He just finished the back nine at his local local golf course. He was going to the strip club to have a beer or two with his favorite dancers, but he was like, you know what? The Xbox fan base isn't very happy right now. They seem to be losing hope. I need to address the masses. And he actually put out a tweet yesterday afternoon saying the following. We're listening and we hear you. We've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. What I find funny about that is you just had a developer's direct. And I feel like... You could have said something there instead of, you know, potentially getting people excited about the future of your platform and the exclusive games that are coming to your platform. Now, a lot of people see this and they're they're planning a business update event for next week. From what I have heard, this was originally for the end of the month, but I think the backlash made them move it up a bit. Uh, but here's the thing about this. When people are reading this, they're thinking, oh, great. Phil's going to come out. It's going to be like a video presentation. He's going to quell all of our fears, this, that, and the other. And I don't think this is because once again, we have been planning a business update event. What does that mean? Because to me, that means that they're going to put out a press release. To me, that means that they're just going to simply say, hey, yeah, some of these games are coming to PlayStation. Some of these games are coming to Nintendo. We're expanding the Xbox brand. We're still going to support the console and still support Game Pass and all that jargon. But yes, some of these exclusive games are now going to be available on other platforms. Now, I've heard, and this is some of the newer information, because I know a lot of people have been asking me, well, what other games? Is it all the games? From what I've heard, it's not necessarily all of the games. Like Hellblade 2... As far as it stands right now, Hellblade 2 is only going to be an Xbox Series game. Now, that could change. That could happen in a year or two or something like that. But it's not going to be like a day and date thing. It's not going to be anything like that. But that's kind of the vibe that we've been getting from all this. That, yes, these games might not be day and date on PlayStation 5, but, you know, six months, a year, something like that down the road. Yes, these games are going to be going to other platforms and a lot of people they're losing their minds over this situation and phil is gonna address us and you know he's not gonna quell our fears he's gonna he's going to you know strip us down and you know take away our fandom and what's funny about that is there's no one to blame for this sort of reaction i feel like obviously this reaction that some of these xbox fans are having with these seven hour spaces and asking phil if they want it if phil wants to come on to their podcast or their twitter space to talk about it why do these relationships why do these people feel entitled to that sort of thing from these executives and it's simply because microsoft has something in common with the Intellivision Amico. You remember the Intellivision Amico where Tommy Tallarico and John Alvarado and all those cohorts were going on every podcast, talking to these people, following them on social media, hosting events with them, going out to eat with them, hanging out with them, uh, you know, talking to them on social media. What does that sound like to you? That sounds a lot like what Xbox does. What Phil Spencer does, he follows these diehard Xbox fans. What what Sarah Bond does, she follows these diehard Xbox fans. They go out sometimes. They hang out at events. They go out to eat and discuss like Xbox and stuff like that. 
what you're doing is you're building a parasocial relationship with these people to where these people will say, Phil Spencer is my friend. A friend would never betray me. A friend would never let me down. A friend would never stab me in the back. And maybe that's naivety on their part. And it definitely, you could definitely say it is. But then when something happens with that person or they make a decision that you don't agree with, then you feel like your friendship has been, you know, it, it's been exposed. It, it's been damaged because I can't, I can't believe they would want to hurt me like this. And that's what Xbox does. Think of all these Xbox influencers who have been to these events, who have been to these things where you see pictures of everyone hanging out and eating food and stuff like that. Like, it's crazy. It's almost like a, a mini cult-like thing. But that's what cult leaders do. They tell you what you want to hear, but they sort of skimp on things in certain areas. Think about everything Phil Spencer has ever said in recent memory about Xbox, how it's going to be a great year for xbox it's going to be the best year for xbox where was it ever the best year for xbox owners where was it the best year for xbox fans you see this is a business at the end of the day folks and it could be a great year for Xbox if they're putting their games on other platforms. It could be a great year for Xbox if they're making more money for their shareholders, thus driving their shareholders' stock prices up and thus generating more revenue for the company. It doesn't have to be about you as an individual. It's never been. It's going to be a great year for us, Expo, for you Xbox owners. We're doing all this. No, it's always been a great year for Xbox. Xbox is a brand. A brand does not care about you. There's too much to care about. You got to worry about you. You got to worry about your employees, your image, your company, your stock prices, your shareholders' happiness. The consumer comes very, very far down that list. And if everything is going good in things like revenue and everything is going good in things like shareholder being appeased, you don't really matter that much. I'm not expecting Phil to come out here and give some big speech, you know, with a video presentation. I think it's just going to be some sort of press release, a business update event. When was the last time a video game company sort of pulled back the veil on a business update event? Does Nintendo do stuff like that for shareholder stuff? Does PlayStation? No, it's always been about games or hardware or or things to look forward to in the future when we get these video presentations so when that pr email drops and you feel your heart sink into your stomach and you're like well why wouldn't phil come on to my channel and talk to me why did phil betray me you know what did stone cold steve austin say pal don't trust anybody a video game corporation is there to make money. If they make you happy along the way, that's great. If they betray your trust and do things you don't like, that's just the nature of the business, man. That's just how businesses work. You're not going to agree with everything that they do, but if they feel like it's the right thing to do, if they feel like, you know, we need to focus less on hardware and more on Game Pass and more on getting our exclusives onto other platforms, then that's what they're going to do. They want to make money. I know it's a crazy concept. This isn't charity, folks. It's all about them greenbacks. So what do we learn in this video? Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, they're well aware of your qualms. They're well aware of your thoughts. And much like the WWE and you wanting Cody Rhodes, they don't give a damn because they're going to do what they feel is best, what they feel is right. And most importantly... Say it with me, kids. What makes them the most money? Don't build these parasocial relationships with these companies online. It's ridiculous. I'll be your friend, but I might piss you off too. So, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm better off as an acquaintance. But this, these are just the latest updates that I've heard, the things that are being said, and the things that I expect to happen next week let me know what you think of all of this in the comments section down below how this will impact the other systems you know man just uncharted territory right here i i don't think they're leaving the hardware business like so many people like i don't think like tomorrow they're just gonna be like okay with xbox we're not doing any more consoles like no they're obviously doing more consoles but i do think they are shifting to an all digital age more so than a lot of other companies are and i do think it's coming sooner rather than later. Let me know all your thoughts 
all your comments. Be sure to argue it out in the comments section. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Like the video if you are new to the channel. Dislike it if you didn't like it. I don't really care. Hit that subscribe button as well. Do some engagement, man. Do, do some engagement with this. And as always, the king of Xbox YouTube. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.